Hello everybody, um, it's Wednesday, another beautiful sunny day. Um, I've been very lucky today, I've been at my school uh, with key workers' children. Um, we've done lots of fun arty activities um, and spent a lot of time outside in the sunshine. It's been really, really lovely. Um, and I also collected lots of stories from my classroom. Um, now I've shared my channel with my class and they, I don't know if many of them are watching, who knows, might be a bit cringy to watch their teacher <laughs> um, reading stories, but um, yeah, I brought a few stories home from our class and the story that I've brought today is actually quite special to myself and to my class because um, when I moved back from Dubai last year, I spent a day with them before starting at the school um, and we call those days like shuffle up days or transition days um, and I read this story to them and they absolutely loved it and it's been in our classroom ever since so I thought it would be the perfect uh, story to share with you today um, and I'm going to read the blurb to you first. It's called The Matchbox Diary. Um, really, really lovely story. I'm conscious I'm saying I'm a lot. Stop that, Miss Sloan. Stop it. Um, anyway, it's <laughs> the story of an amazing life all in one tiny box. And I remember when I shared this with my class, I gave them all a little box each, a little matchbox with a pebble inside it. They each had one. And they had to open the box, find the pebble. Anyway, I will. Um, I'll pr I should probably explain that afterwards, but I'll do it now. We're there. Um, so they opened the box, found a pebble, and then they had to write the story of the pebble. Um, now that will make sense after reading this story, but I think maybe some of you might be able to predict what the story might be about based on the title and what I have just told you. So the Matchbox Diary. I'm going to read the blurb to you. Um, and then we'll get going. So, pick whatever you like the most, says the little girl's great-grandfather. Then I'll tell you its story. A photograph, a bottle top, a ticket, a tooth, each one in a matchbox. So many things to choose from. Together, they tell of a fascinating journey across the sea to a new life on the other side of the world. Uh, I'm going to try and show you the pictures. I'm not sure if last time was any better, but I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> okay, here we go. Pick whatever you like the most, then I'll tell you its story. There's so many things here. You'll know when you see it and then I'll know something about you, the great granddaughter I've only heard about. Lots of trinkets in that room. So, you like boxes, just like me. You smoke cigars? No, me neither. There's no cigars in it anyway. What's inside? Not just one story, but lots. What's in the little boxes? My diary. What's a diary? A way to remember what happens to you. Usually it's a book people write in. When I was your age, I had a lot I wanted to remember, but I couldn't read or write. So I started this. Open the first box. What is it? An olive stone. I put it in my palm and I'm right back in Italy. That's where I grew up. Lots of olive trees there. Life was hard, 
the other reason I saved it. No floor in our house, just earth. No heat in winter, except the fire under the cooking pot. And sometimes, not enough food. Whenever I told my mother I was hungry, she gave me an olive stone to suck on. It helped. Who's this? My father. He went to America to work. He sent money home. Lots of Italian men did that. I was a baby when he left. All I remembered about him was his moustache. Once he sent pictures so we wouldn't forget him. My father never went to school. Back then, most kids had to help their parents all day. He had to get someone to write his letters home from America. Whenever one came, we had a problem. Four older sisters, my mother and me, none of us could read. We had to take it to the schoolmaster. He had a son, older than me, who could read and write. Every day, that boy wrote down what happened in a diary. Every year, he got a new one. Red leather with a silk bookmark. I had no idea how to write, but I was dying to have my own diary. I want one too. That's my girl. There was a year with no rain, no wheat, no macaroni. The schoolmaster wrote a letter to my father for us. We waited. A long time later, a letter came back with tickets to sail to America. When we left, my grandmother cried in the road. You'll eat the food there and forget your home over and over again. We took a horse-drawn carriage to Naples. It was the first time I'd seen a car. And drinks in bottles and the sea. We slept three nights on the floor in the steamship station, waiting for our boat. That's where I found the matchboxes. I told my grandmother I wouldn't forget her or anything else. And that's when I started my diary. Our ship left. We were in the bottom where the motion was worst. People seasick, moaning. My sisters took me up on deck. You like that hairpin? When I found it, I looked up and high above us were rich ladies in big hats on the upper decks. People said there was gold lying on the ground in America. I thought my mother and my sisters would look like those women soon. That's a hairpin. We were bound for Ellis Island in New York. Someone told me that men would stick button hooks in our eyes there. What's a button hook? A metal tool for fastening shoes before there were laces. I had nightmares about the button hook men. Then we had bigger problems. A storm hit us, maybe a hurricane. The boat bucked like a horse. I saw a bunch of the sailors praying together not good. St Christopher is supposed to protect travellers. People threw medallions of him into the sea, begging him to spare us. After three days, the water calmed. That's a St Christopher. How long did it take you to fly across the country? Five hours. That trip from Italy took 19 days. I know because I put a sunflower seed shell in this box every morning. 
Then everyone was calling, La Statua de la Liberté. I don't know if I've said that right. <laughs> I ran up to the deck. There was New York. A boat came to ours selling food. Our neighbours on the ship bought bananas and gave my family one. I bit into it and spat it out. I didn't know you're supposed to peel it. Is the sunflower seeds? And the Statue of Liberty. How come this one's empty? I'll tell you why. We got off on Ellis Island. They didn't want to let in anybody who was ill, especially people with eye diseases. All morning I'd been crying because of the button hook man. When I saw him, I screamed. He grabbed me and used the handle to roll up my eyelid and look underneath. Red, he said. He can't come in. My mother fainted. My older sister found a doctor who spoke Italian and told him my eyes were red from crying so much. She gave me peppermint sweets to calm me down. Later, a new doctor checked me using his finger. That one let me pass. I put a sweet in the box. Then the next week, I ate it. My father met us. Everyone cried. I smelled his moustache to see if it was really him. We took a boat to New York, then a train somewhere else. The next day, we started work in the canneries. All seven of us, cutting fish all day. Always a man watching to make sure we weren't slowing down. They gave us old, falling apart sheds to live in, as crowded as the ship. You didn't have your own room? No, sweetheart. Canning fish, sorting peaches, shelling peas, then down to the south, peeling shrimp and opening oyster shells whenever there was work. We moved so often, I could barely remember where I was or where I'd been. That was why I started saving bits of newspaper so that one day I could look back and say that I was in that exact place on that exact day. I still love newspapers. Instead of jewels, my mother and my sisters had fish scales on their arms. The strange thing was, when we walked down a street and maybe passed a grocer's shop, the same people who bought our cans of sardines wouldn't look at us. Back then, some people didn't want Italians here. Sometimes, boys threw rocks. That's how my tooth got here. That's my favourite box, my first baseball game. I didn't understand it, why the men were running, but I was in heaven not to be working and to sit beside my father. Under the grandstands, I found more matchboxes. Then, in a clump of grass, a coin. That meant we could go again. To me, it seemed like one of the lumps of gold that people said we'd find. I was eight when we got a flat and all rolled cigars at the kitchen table. A few years later, we switched to shelling nuts for restaurants day and night. Then my father got a job at a foundry in Pittsburgh making railway parts. My sisters sewed in a factory. My mother told my father I should go to school. She'd seen me staring at signs and circus posters, trying to understand. Sometimes I'd draw letters with a piece of coal. She wanted me to learn and to teach my sisters. Big argument. Days and weeks. Who won the argument? I'll give you a clue. I went to school. <laughs> it was hard. English seemed as crazy as baseball. 
I had to sit with the little kids. They made fun of how I talked, but I learned to read and write. What they taught us during the day, I taught my sisters that night. Then I went to a different school where I learned typesetting, picking out the lead letters from their compartments. That's how everything was printed before computers. I had good eyes from always looking for little things for my matchboxes. I became a printer. Did you stop the matchbox diary? In a way, I never did. After 30 years of printing, I opened a bookshop. Books are like newspapers. They show where you've been. Then I bought and sold antiques, old things that people had saved for years, filled with stories, other people's diaries. I wish I could write a diary. Do you go to school yet? To kindergarten, lucky girl. You'll be writing before you know it. Until then, I bet you're a good collector, just like me. You can spot lots of things on those pages. The end. But the picture on the last page shows the little girl with two of her own trinkets. Um, another book that I really, really enjoyed. I'm not sure if many of you will have heard of it, um, but obviously, as I said in previous in a previous video, I think it was yesterday's. If you do have any books that you really, really love and you'd like me to read, then I'd be more than happy to. Um, I've brought home lots of books, as I said earlier, uh, to read over the next few days. And I've got some more coming from Amazon. But of course, if there are others that I do not have, please feel free to suggest. Um, anyway, I hope you've had a lovely day in the sunshine uh, and I wish you all the best. And I will see you tomorrow or you'll see me tomorrow. Take care, everybody.